I have kind of a love story with the actual Casimir force, you know, because I, I was reading years ago this uh, wonderful anecdote that Casimir, who proposed this phenomenon, the phenomenon is very simple, okay? If you have two metallic surfaces and you put them a very short distance and you are in a, a vacuum, also air, and there are no charges on the metallic surfaces, common sense is if there are no charges, the plates do not pull together, right? Because there are no charge. Wrong. Quantum mechanics says us that instead, two metallic surfaces, even if there are no charges on, they attract e, uh, uh, each other, and the effect can be very large when you place them at small distances. At distances, in fact, of around 10 nanometer, you can get an atmosphere of pressure, the Casimir fresh. So this fascinated me. And, uh, you know, what I felt is, what can I do with this? So I was at Bell Laboratories then, and I said, you know, there was this technology of uh, micro-machinery called Microelectromechanical Systems, MEMS, which allows you to put mechanical parts at very short distance, very small separation. So I said, if I can put nicely machined parts very close to each other, to nanometer, I should be able to observe the effect of this force. And I got quite excited. I got a fantastic uh, postdoc who is now becoming a prominent professor in uh, Hong Kong by the name of Ho Bun Chan. I hired him from MIT and uh, we started to design this gizmo, this gadget, and sure enough, we found, we mas basically made a seesaw, a tiny mechanical seesaw, which was metallized. This is the seesaw. And then we approach it with a metallical sphere. So then as we got closer, closer, when it started to get around 100 nanometer, we measured the tiny tilt of the seesaw, which was attracted, you know, because it was uh, attracted by the sphere. So that, I go back to designer science. That uh, gave us the idea, what, what are we going to do next? Now we can machine by machining these surfaces in a different way, we can tailor, we can design this quantum mechanical force. I want to go back. What is the physical origin of the quantum mechanical forces? Okay, quantum mechanics says us there is no real vacuum. The Aristotelian vacuum does not exist. Even in vacuum is a constant activity. We have particles that pop in and out from vacuum, photons and other stuff. And you can show that these uh, popping in and out causes two metallic plates to attract each other when we are at short distance. The next big step goes to a work done by a famous uh, trio of Russian physicists of the famous Landau, Landau Institute of Physics, Lifshitz, uh, Dialochinsky, and uh, uh, Pitaisky, who have the privilege to meet uh, the last two in particular, Dialochinsky and uh, Pitaeski are still active. They predicted a very strange phenomenon in the sea. This has fascinated me. That under certain circumstances, the Casimir force could become repulsive. Of course, not in vacuum. But if you are in an actual liquid, if you choose appropriately the materials, the force between two objects can turn from attractive to repulsive. They predicted this in 1960. So I got fascinated and I got a great student from physics and I said, let's go after it. And so this was a PhD that lasted five years and in collaboration with a prominent uh, chemical physicist at the NIH, Professor Adrian Persejan, a few years ago we reported in Nature the first uh, measurement of this repulsive Casimir force that followed the prediction of the Russians, you know, of uh, almost 50 years ago. And there is an interesting follow-up. When we got this uh, out, uh, Professor Pitaeschi, who works in Italy now, he's a truly a great uh, scientist, says, Federico, I want to come and talk about this stuff to Harvard. He says, you are welcome, but you know it all. You predicted, he says, ah, but after seeing your experiment, because, you know, it's not easy to explain. So he said, I'm going to come, I want to give a talk and try to give an easier type of explanation. So we, we started to interact and it was fascinating. Now, what is the big picture of this? Right? Why am I so excited? Again, I try to see 
the connection. See, this is a basic science result, but I'm interested in technology. What is the technology implication? Take now two bodies. Suppose that you put the right fluid in between. If we control, if we understand better the Casimir force, we can understand fundamentally friction. You see, friction is often treated as just a dirt problem. Many physicists don't want to touch friction because, ah. But in reality, there is a fundamental component. You see, friction between surfaces is affected by quantum mechanics, by quantum fluctuation. So th what we proposed after this work to make new kinds of bearings, you know bearings that are typically used to reduce friction, if we say, if we can separate mechanical parts by certain fluids, and we can induce this repulsive force, we can reduce friction. So the big picture is to make, uh, the big picture to make in the future novel nanomachinery that allows us to control uh, friction, you know, starting from the fundamental level. And we've just taken the first the baby steps. The experiments are very hard. One uh, last thing is this. Once I had, which I thought was uh, one of the best ideas of my career, it goes, go, it goes again back to the Russian. And I said, if I choose two materials, I ask my question and I put them close, two special materials. And I had the idea, can I get the quantum fluctuation of Gakun to give a torque that now my hands are not only uh, attracted, but this happens. So I got quite excited. And I talked to a Russian professor at MIT, so I said, it's a great idea. But you know, there was, this was a Russian prediction from 1960. The paper is in Russian. I can help you translate it. But the author is actually here in the United States now, Professor Barash. So we organized a quick session in Harvard. I invited him. They translated for me the paper. And we started to do some experiments. So this is our new frontier, to start to look at these torques. So there is a completely area of exciting research open up. I call it, again, designer science and technology, because by designing these surfaces at the nanoscale, we can design the forces, both attractive and repulsive. So I, th I, I hope you've given it. There is a real big picture behind this of new science and, uh, and uh, new technology that uh, you see, straddles many different fields. We talk about surfaces, we talk about chemistry, quantum electrodynamics, right? Uh, mechanics, uh, optics, and uh, lots of application, lots of engineering. There are many challenges still open, okay? There are theoretical challenges. So we have been collaborating with a group at MIT who is a world leader, Professor Steve Johnson, who has uh, developed powerful computational uh, tools to calculate essentially these forces for any kind of geometry. So now this opens up a complete area. Now we have to inject design on this. What can we design? And then they can compute what they can design and we can do measurements. You see, so it's a completely open space of invention which needs this uh, uh, very advanced theory to actually compute it. You see, until now, Every time you specified the problem, a different type of geometry, you had to write a new program to compute it. This is not practical, right? So this is one of the things. There is another problem that is completely wide open, and this is uh, somewhat mysterious. It's actually not mysterious. This was, this was put forward by the great Schwinger, who got the Nobel Prize in Physics with Feynman and with the Tomonaga for quantum electrodynamics. He worked here at Harvard. The last four years of his career, he published four papers by the exotic title Casimir Light. What did he mean, Casimir Light? What he realizes is, suppose that I take now two mechanical parts, again, there is no charge on it, and I start to make them oscillate. Not a fixed distance, they oscillate. What he predicted, that this mechanical oscillation would lead to an extraction of light out of vacuum. This is weird. He called it Casimir light. So what happens is, because of the interaction with the quantum fluctuation, you can convert the mechanical energy of oscillation into pairs of photons. We are after this effect, we would like to observe it. It's extremely hard. It's this tiny effect. Is it going to be useful? I don't believe it. 
But the beauty is, what is the big question scientifically, is uh, you know, trying to understand better the connection between mechanical motion, you see macroscopic objects and actually quantum electro, uh, and actually quantum electrodynamics. And in fact, there is a fascinating connection. This problem of extraction of light out of a vibrating mechanical structure is related, broadly speaking, to the physics of black holes and to Hawking ray uh, radiation, actually. This type of light is a generalization of the uh, ray uh, radiation from so-called thermal ray uh, radiation coming out from black holes. There is a connection. So again, you know, science is all interconnected, right? What is uh, fascinating about the Casimir, uh, this Casimir light, this so-called dynamic Casimir effect, okay, is understanding better at a fundamental level the connection between mechanical motion of uh, uh, macroscopic uh, bodies, mirrors, and so forth, and quantum electrodynamics, you know. Like, you know, uh, uh, moving bodies that, that vibrate, for example, can help us extract light of vacuum, even if there is no charge. You see, this is very paradoxical. And so this opens up many questions, and some we, we still have to come up with the correct questions.